Welcome to another segment of Under the Microscope. This is Jeff Gold, and thanks so much for being with us. I'm joined today by Dr. Howard Liu, the Director of Faculty Development uh, for the University of Nebraska Medical Center, to talk about the IXL program. Howard, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Dr. Gold. So, as our audience may know, uh, the Board of Regents uh, recently approved the IXL program and there are several bills pending before the legislature to give us at least some of the preliminary funding to get this program off the ground. And I wonder if you could spend a few minutes uh, sharing with me and sharing with our audience uh, what our faculty need to know about the IXL program, particularly as it rolls out over the next year. So I think that the faculty on this campus are tremendously excited by two things. One is they know that you are a fellow educator, and actually that's remarkable. I and love hearing that because it's so true. <laughs> so, uh, so they really are excited and energized in a way that I haven't seen in years uh, on this educational front. So as they are approaching this piece, the second layer is that, of course, uh, medical education and health professions education is evolving on many fronts. You know, how do we make sure active learning is more engaged across the classrooms? How do we make sure that as new technology is emerging, so mobile technology, wearable technology, and so on, that that's integrated into the classroom? And just making sure that faculty really are enabled to take risks in the classroom to make sure that the teaching is cutting edge. Well, it's great to hear. I know that the, there's a lot of excitement, not only among faculty, but among students. I recently had the opportunity to uh, meet with a group of students at the Student Senate yes. uh, to talk about what some of this experiential learning is going to be like. Mm -hmm. And they're really excited about the fact that it's not just a technology for the sake of technology, but it's going to move them from a classroom environment into an experiential learning mm -hmm. environment. And mm -hmm. that's really uh, what seems to be turning them on. I would agree with that comment. And really, you know, the, in terms of the experiential learning, and my understanding of simulation is that it works best across different industries if it's highest fidelity to reality. So the airline industry has very advanced simulators, as you know, sure. has led the world in, in increased safety and performance. And I think healthcare is right following along on that path. And for our students, they'll be able to not only just talk about in a lecture what the heart might look like under certain conditions, but uh, to really experience what it's like to be inside that artery, inside the heart, and see what the, the architecture is like from the inside. So one more question today, and I'm sure there'll be more in the future, but if faculty want to get involved and want to learn more about the IXL programs and, and how it's going to relate to their involvement, what are your suggestions for them? So there are many forums meeting across campus right now, currently led by Vice Chancellor Davies from Academic Affairs and also Kyle Meyer, uh, Dean of Allied Health, and they are leading uh, many faculty interest groups. We also are forming a teaching academy uh, interest group as well that will encompass the whole campus, all the colleges and institutes, so people can participate. Well, that's also very exciting, and the whole concept of having a teaching academy, an academy of educators, mm -hmm. as it's known in some institutions, recognizes the importance of the, our education-intensive faculty, and it provides a level of recognition as well as allows for them to uh, think together about how to build this really creative future. I would agree, and as you've demonstrated with Ebola and infectious disease, we really have world-class clinical care and education, and sometimes we need a sense of community to bring that to the forefront. For example, these, these groups from the Academy of Educators will bring uh, increased scholarship. We hope to really double the output of papers and national presentations and making sure that UNMC is seen as the leading light for education across the country. That's super. Howard, thank you so much for joining us today, and thank you for joining us for this segment of Under the Microscope. <laughs>